traders Hawaii. This is Wanjiro Kishangi of Forex Exploits Online Academy. How have you been? I hope you've been well. On this video, this is a part two of the block video. On the other video, we talked about blocks that hold. So if you've not had a chance to watch it, or this is the first time you interact with my channel, go back to the channel, which is Forex Exploits Online Academy, and watch the part one of the videos. I did it uh, eight days ago. So you need to watch this first video so that you can understand what I'll be uh, discussing on this video. So on this video is about refinement, refinement of these blocks. Now we have six types of blocks that we talked about in the other video. And today I'll be adding another uh, block. So there'll be seven. And then we talk about refinement. What is refinement? Basically refinement of blocks is minimizing the range so that you lower the risk. There are different types of refinement. So you have the five types of refinement. And before we get to the refinement, it's always good that you know the different types of blocks. So the first six, these first six blocks here were discussed on part one of the block videos. And the only block that I did not mention is the supply and demand block. So I'll just quickly illustrate what the supply and demand uh, block looks like. Let's say that you're on a buying cycle, meaning the market is pushing high, giving you higher highs and higher highs and higher highs. Now, anytime you get a higher high, the point from which that higher high is being formed becomes a buying block. So we have those different types of buying blocks. Now, at some point, because the market does not move in a straight line, at some point, the market will violate that move to, from the top side to the bottom side. Remember, there was a block here that was responsible for this last high. Now, this buying block will be violated. It will be broken to the bottom side. If this break at this specific time here at this point was broken by a red candlestick, if at this point the market broke the block with a red candlestick, and I'm not talking about a week, I'm talking about the solid part of the candlestick. Now, this buying block changes immediately from a demand block to a supply block. So, what would happen? We'd wait for the market to come back to this same block, and we'll have limit orders here for a sell trade because the market will be a very fast to. Uh, to trade away from it. So this here becomes a supply and demand block, meaning a demand block that will stand to a supply block and if it's retested, we trade away from it. The same thing if you're on the selling cycle, so you're pushing, creating lower lows and lower lows and lower lows. Every point from where the lower lows came from becomes a selling block. So we have selling blocks on each pivot points. Now, if the market for some reason violates uh, those blocks to the top side, now this was once a supply zone, it has become a demand zone. And therefore, if the market retraces back in a reactive manner, we expect it to trade to the top side. The only time that this does not hold and this does not hold is if this move here, and this is very, very important for you to note, if this move back to the block is not reactive, it's not slow. If it just gives you a very impassive back, then you know it will not hold that rule will not hold and actually the market will continue downward. And of course, if it's, if it's very impassive, then this uh, sell will not happen and the market will continue upward. So these are this, the demand and supply blocks that I've added in number seven. The reason I omitted them on the first uh, video is because the supply and demand uh, blocks are only enough uh, important or used by people who are trading volume or who are trading the supply and demand strategy. If you're new to supply and demand strategy or you need to know the rules that make those types of blocks or how to actually trade it professionally, you can always get a copy of my ebook for that is uh, where I've written about supply and demand in details, its rules, and of course how to trade it. So those are the seven types of blocks we'll be dealing with today. 
Now, how do we refine them? Now, refinement we basically means it's minimizing the range so that we can lower the risk. Now, let's say that this is my buying block. So we have this buying block here. We expect the market to come back into it and actually trade away. Now, in this case, for a normal block or just someone who doesn't know how to define or what you expected to do is that you expected to have an entry or a limit at point X. So this is point X. This is where your entry will be when the uh, market leaves that block. So you expected to have your entry here. And where will your stop loss be? It will be at point Y. So your stop loss is expected to be at point Y while your entry is at point X. Now the distance between point X and Y Let's say this is 30 pips. So this is your risk. This is your stop loss. So you're actually risking 30 pips for this trade. Now, when you get to refinement, what you do is you minimize your risk. And how do you minimize your risk? You can use either of these five ways. For example, if you're using the 50% reduction, it would mean that you have to reduce your block to 50%. So instead of having your entry at point X, you're going to have your entry at point W. And therefore your risk, instead of having 30, you actually just have 50. Now, when you minimize your risk, you also add your reward. Because now if your entry is at W, the 15 pips that you've minimized from your risk will actually be a reward for you. So you have earned that 50, that is why a refinement is very important because it helps you or adds to your reward. Then there is the second uh, refinement where we use the weak refinement. Now, this is specific to the kissing candle block. Just a, a recap on the types of uh, blocks, by the way. So the hidden candle block, the hidden candle block will be given by that uh, candlestick that is hidden by the two a candlestick on the other side, how you draw your block, you pick the top tail, the bottom tail of that block, and then you have the, the hidden candle, can be a buy or a selling block. For the end gap, this is where a candlestick is totally covered by the next candlestick. So if it's a buying candle, when you're drawing your block, you actually just pick that candlestick that is engulfed, not the engulfing candle, no. The only candlestick that is in guard, that is what will give you a block. Can either be a buying end guard or a sell. Now, with the end guard, it doesn't have to be the solid part of the candlestick, it can also be the wicks. So the wicks can also do the end guarding. So if it has wicks on either side, we just pick and that is a block. Then we have the multiple candle. Sorry, we have the multiple candle block. This is where two or three candlesticks will be used to cover one specific candlestick to the opposite direction. So if it's a buying multiple candle block, we have three candlesticks covering this. So when you drain your block, you actually just pick that candlestick that is being covered by the two or three candlesticks. The same for the cell. Then we have the void block. The void block is what we call the, the imbalance or the inefficiency block. So you just pick that a point where there is no uh, interaction or participation to the left or to the right, you pick that and you create a block. Then we have the kissing candle block. Remember the kissing candle block are the candles that have relatively equal wicks on both sides and the candlesticks are close to each other. When you drain the block, you pick uh, the, the, the wicks only. So the wicks make the block. If it's a buying, going to pick the top of the second candlestick and the bottom of the first candlestick. If it's a cell, you're going to pick the top of the first candlestick and the bottom of the second candlestick, and that is how you create a selling block. Then we have the tweezer block. We have the tweezer block. This is where the two candlesticks are of equal size. Remember, the tweezer block is also the railroad track uh, block, where we have the two candlesticks of equal sizes. Now, the type of block will be determined by the second candlestick. So if the second candlestick is a buying candlestick, Therefore, it will be a buying tweezer block. Uh, if the second one is selling, so it's going to be a selling tweezer block. So that is how you draw your blocks. Now, when it comes to refining, when it comes to refining and you're using the weak refinement, so this is specific to the kissing block. It's important that I note to this point that different blocks have different refinement ways. 
So do not use a, a block and refine it in a way that it's not supposed to be refined. As we move through, I'll be showing you different examples of different blocks and how to refine them. So do not use the refinement for all blocks. Each block has its own way of refinement. If you need to have success with trading blocks, you also need to be very, very keen on how you refine them. So with the wicks, you only use it when you're having the kissing candle block. This is what I mean. For buying a kissing candle block, remember we buy from the low, we sell from the high. So if you want to refine this to a buying a kissing candle block, you only be interested with the bottom tail. So when you draw, you just draw your block, then on refinement, you're expected to ignore the top tail and the bodies completely and just pick the low, the lower side or the lower tail. So your entry will be at this point or your limit order will be at this point and your stop loss will be below. This way you have minimized your risk and actually added your chances of reward. If it's on a selling cycle, remember we sell from the high. So you're going to ignore the bottom tail and only uh, concentrate on the top tail. Therefore, you pick that tail. So your sell order will be at the bottom side and your stop loss will be up here. This way, you have better entries, okay? Or you don't risk so much. And with this kind of refinement, it helps you to actually add on your lot size without having some blood pressure. Then we have uh, the third way of refinement, which is the fast candle refinement. Now, this is for the, uh, for the multiple candle block. This is specific for the multiple candle block. So when you go to the multiple candle block, we have the buying where we have these three candlesticks covering this. When you talk about the fast candle, just minimize your block to this fast candle only. So your buy will be here, your stop loss will be here. So instead of having all these as your stop loss, now you have minimized. For the sell again, it's still the first candle. So just minimize that. So your sell limit will be here and your stop loss will be here. Something I would want to add is for the multiple candle block, for the multiple candle block, you can refine it in three ways. One, you can do the first candle, which is the most uh, recommended by doing the first candle uh, refinement. Or two, you can take the whole block and do the 50%. If you double click, you're going to get this middle highlight. Pick your straight line, take it to that middle point, and you can reduce your block to that 50%. Okay, it still does the reduction on the risk. That is way number two. Way number three is going to the lower time frame. If this was on a daily, you can go to the lower time frame, maybe an hour, four hour, 30 minutes, and find a block within the same block in that block there. Is there another type of block that you can use? So those are the three ways of refining a multiple candle block. Then we have the lower time frame refinement. Lower time frame refinement is the same thing that I've said that you can go to a lower time frame and check if this a block that is within that uh, block. Now, the lower time frame is very, very useful when you're using the, the engulfing candle block. But the engulfing candle block, it's best if it's traded just the way it is. It's best, let me repeat, an engulf or strong block is best if it's traded just the way it is. Or if you can go to the lower time frame and uh, get so the no refinement at all usually applies to the strong block or the engulfing block, but you just leave it the way it is. This will be your entry, this will be your stop loss. This will be your entry, this will be your stop loss. So don't touch it. But you can also go to the lower time frame and check if within it there is another strong block. So for the hidden candle, so let me give you a recap of how to define each of these. Okay. So for the hidden candle block, you can either leave it as it is, so pay attention for the hidden candle block. You can leave it as it is because they're usually very tiny, or you can do the 50%. Okay. How you do the 50%? Double click, have this middle highlight, pick your line, and then you can minimize your block to that part. Okay. 
so that is the 50 percent so if you're buying of course it should be the other side so your entry will be here your stop loss will be here that is one way alternatively you can just leave it as it is just have your limit here and your stop loss that is for the hidden candle for the end guard, leave it as it is or go to the lower time frame and find a block within the same strong block or the same end graphing block. For the multiple candle block, you can either get the first candle, uh, do the 50% or go to the lower time frame. For the void block, leave it as it is, leave it as it is because the imbalance block usually have a tendency of having like being retested, the whole of it. So you can actually just leave it as it is, or you can go to the lower time frame and check if there's another block uh, within it. Also, when it comes to entry, the void block is special in a way because sometimes it will be retested 100%. I mean, it will be retested to the last part. So this is some kind of block that can give you double entries. You can have an entry at point zero, and also an entry at point 100, okay? You see that on the chart. And also as you back test. Is the kissing candle, of course, we define with the weeks, depending on the direction. If you're on the buy, you pick the bottom tail. If you're on the sell, you pick the top tail. For the double tweezer block, they're usually very tiny. Leave them as they are. Leave them as they are with no refinement at all. Or you can go to the lower time frame and see if they are any other blocks within. Now with the supply turn demand or the demand turn supply kind of block, now this one would be determined by the type of block. Remember, it's a supply and demand block, but of course it will turn out to be either of the six above. So depending with which among these has created the supply and demand block, now you know how to refine it based with what I have explained. Now let's go to the charts. Let's go to the chart and see how you can apply that. Remember what I said on the other video. And if you just new, post this video at this point. Go back to the YouTube channel and watch this video. So that it can all make sense because this specific video is part one. This is part one. And what you're watching right now is part two of the same video. And also be kind, subscribe, and also share. You can also find me on LinkedIn using the same name, Forex Exploits Online Academy. That is if you're not on Facebook, but if you're on Facebook, this is the most, um, where I'm most active on this page on Facebook. So you can always send us a message or you can WhatsApp the number on the page. Kindly don't call, just WhatsApp the number give us your feedback, give us your topic requests, and you work on it. Back to the video. Every time you open your chart, always identify where the market is coming from. That is very important. Why? Because where the market is coming from is what will show you the direction the market is going to take. And where you're coming from is always from a peak. So it's either from the peak at the top side or the peak at the bottom side. And in this case, of course, for cable on four hour chart, we've been coming from the peak at the top. And since we sell from the high, we'd be expecting the market should be pushing lower, giving us lower lows if we were to deal with market structure. So here we have uh, a selling cycle. If you still are struggling with analysis, you can still go back to the channel and watch uh, the market structure video. We also have a demand and supply video. We also have a market structure video, which is very, very important. This is like the most important video uh, for any trader. So make sure that you watch the market structure video. And while at it, you can also uh, learn how to spot the reversals so that you're not caught up or trapped in the wrong direction. Here we have our peak. We have the break of market structure to the bottom side. Now, since we are dealing with a block video, ours is to identify the blocks. Once we've identified the blocks, now we refine them. On our other video, we just identified, today we're going to refine. So here with our first uh, break of structure, we have this RLT. You see these two candlesticks here? 
they are of equal size, look at the size of the bodies, they are equal. The tail to the top is equal to the uh, tail at the bottom. So this is an RLT or double tweezer. Now with a double tweezer, you can either leave it as it is, but you can see this is a lot of risk. Let's see how many pips those are. So if you're to get into that trade, you have a 63.9 pips top loss. That is a lot, okay? Also depending with your, with your type of account or size of account, that is a lot of stop loss unless you're a swing trader or you have a very big uh, account. Now, how do, you, how do you define an RLT? You can do it in two ways. You can either no refinement at all, or you can go to a lower time frame and check if there is another block in that block, or you can actually do the 50%. So for me, 50% all the time, so we double click on the edges. We have this highlight, we pick the straight line, pick it there so that we have the exact 50% mark. So we're going to reduce our block to that part. And now we have our entry. So how much are we risking this time? We have at least 30, 30.5 or something. So that is much lower, right? And you can see that the market did not hit our stop loss and we kept getting something out of the market. Now, it even becomes stronger if a block has some accumulation before it's tapped. Can you see this part here? This is just something that I'm adding um, as an extra source. <laughs> so if, if a block, if you have a block, I'm sorry, you have a block and before it's being touched, there is some accumulation to it, that's just, some sign that it's going to really be a good payday. Okay. If you if you just specify on trading those strong, strong blocks, I would advise that you look for blocks that have some accumulation before the tap happens. Because every time there's that tap and there was some accumulation, the pay is usually uh, really beautiful. So it was tapped. Okay, we have this tap here, you could have earned. Uh, you lose it back or you just take profit, go back, obviously into the accumulation, wait for the tap again, get some money. And you only actually take profit on such a trade if the previous law or previous liquidity point has been violated or has been hit. And you can see this law was actually broken. And then from there, you can take profit. Now you've taken profit. Remember, we just from the peak. And since we just from the peak and just had our first run back down, we expect to have at least two more, two more runs before we can say actually that trend or oh, has, you know, has slowed down. So what are we looking for? Some time break, okay, or some trapping. And in this trapping, of course, what we will be doing will be marking our our blocks. This is where you sit and watch the market. And as you're watching, what are you doing? You're marking your blocks just in case either of them gets retested. Okay, here we have a hidden block, hidden candle block. We also have beside this break of this range, we have a kissing candle block, so you can draw it there. We also have a void or an imbalance block, so you can draw it there. Okay, naturally this void without this part here, it would actually get to that point. All this will sell with no buying to the left or to the right. Now, this is a void block. Let me mark this. So we have the void block, we have the kissing candle block, and we have the hidden candle block. Now we wait for the market to retest either of these, and here we have it retesting the void block. Now for the void block, you can uh, change it or you can refine it in three ways. Again, you can go to the lower time frame and check if there was any block in here. Alternatively, you can do the 50%, which is always the best when it comes to me, but that's just personal choice. We'll do the 50%, change our block to that point, and you can see how beautifully that 50% was hit. See, so you have your entry there, okay? And you wait for the market to push lower than this. You can either take your take profit here or just hold it until there's the next accumulation back. And of course, your stop loss will be at the top. You can see it was not hit. Now we have a second push to the bottom side. So we have one, then we have two. Every time yellow is violated, it's always good if you can draw a line so that you can count them, but it's still okay if you can just do mental calculation. So we have the second push. What are we looking for? We're looking for now a third push. 
okay at least at that push that is what you'd expect or the waves that happen in this market so while you're waiting what do you do you draw all the blocks that were created on the second move so we have the multiple candle block we have the void block then we have the strong block of course when the three are together even with the name you can tell which one will be retested first of course it's a strong block it's not easy to ignore a strong block even in the midst of all other blocks so that is something that you should really keep close to your heart that a strong block is something that you should really not ignore now how you refine a strong block is of course no refinement at all you just leave it as it is have your limit to the bottom side and of course you see it was beautifully tapped and it gave you the third move alternatively you could have gone to the lower time frame and check if there was a block now, something special about the void block. Can you see this void block here? There's something beautiful about the void block. Most of the times, the void blocks, most of the times, and I mean most, meaning 70% or okay, 70, above 70, can be 71 or whichever number, but above 70, the, the void blocks will be retested almost to the t almost to the beginning of it can you see this like beautiful to the last coin so if you have a void block it's important if you could have two entries you have a limit at the start of that void and you also have a limit at the 50 percent for me i'm a 50 percent trader so i would have my 50 percent there okay i would suffer some loss okay but in just the next candlestick it will all come back so it's important don't forget to set your stop loss don't forget to step uh, to do your stop loss because these blocks can also be violated depending with the volume but how you tell if the block will be violated is something that we we'll discuss on the next video on part three of blocks now we want the four hour let's check what you do on your daily again you do the same thing identify the peak where are we coming from we're coming from a very strong block you leave it as it is you go to the lower time frame and find a strong block within it in this case since you're on the daily works best if you can just leave it there it is so here you'd have your cell and your stop loss up there then breaking of this uh demand zone turns supply you have the kissing candle block within the kissing candle block uh, it blows to the bottom side, comes back, creating an uh, an engulfing block. Okay, how do you deal with an engulfing or strong block? You leave it as it is. Again, there's an, another engulfing block. Leave it as it is. Engulfing block. Leave it as it is. Okay, you just keep pushing. Once it's touched to get a limit, when it's on the higher time frame and you find that it's an engulf, just leave it as it is. No need to refine it but here we have a multiple candle you see these two candlesticks here we are responsible of breaking these green candlesticks so you have two ways to refine it actually three you can either go to the lower time frame and check if there is a block that is one two you can go to just the first candle and if you did the first candle you would not have been triggered therefore you would not have gotten that trade okay and if you did the fifth one or the third one sorry which is the 50%, again, you would have missed entry. So the best thing is to go to the lower time frame and check if there was a block. And I'm sure there was a block because this is almost like a kiss. And this is actually a kissing candle. Though now this will not work because you see it has been violated. So we do, a, do the kissing candle block here. Can you see that it was violated to the top side, meaning this candlestick is actually closed above the kissing candle block? Therefore, that is invalid. Once a block is violated or it has been broken, remember to delete it because it means it really was not strong. And with these two videos, we're just talking about blocks that really hold. You're going to find all sorts of blocks everywhere on each time frame, but they are not important if they are not strong enough to hold. Now let's go to our one hour chart again. Whether it's one hour, whether it's five minutes, whether it's one minute, always identify where the market is coming from. Here we have coming from an RLT or a double tweezer. What do you do with this? Leave it as it is or do the 50%. If you did the 50% here, you'd have missed the entry. You'd not have gotten your trigger. 
okay? So it did not stop the 50, but if you left it as it is and you had your optimal entry, it was stopped very beautifully and you'd get into that trade. Then now, of course, where we change the supply to demand, it's always obvious that you have a block and it will be retested. Even the technical trader will say support, turn resistance, something like that. So that's also a very important point. So here we have an RLT again. Now, 60% of the time, the first block that gives you the peak, there's 60% chance that it will still be your first block or the same kind of block that will give you the first uh, block. But again, it's not cast on stone, so back test and see. This is just my view. Any block that gives my peak is also the same block that gives me my first trade away. And here we have my RLT. So how do you do this? You can either do the 50% or optimal. It's best if you left it optimal because if you did the 50%, again, you'd have missed that trade. Now with blocks, you should always have the patience and also the hearts to know that you're going to miss a lot of trades if you're not very careful with your requirement. So here, do the optimal. You know how the easiest way to to actually do this is to have two trades, have one at 50 and have one at optimal. Whatever happens, whichever gets triggered. And going down, we have the strong and gaff. You can see the strong block, the engulfing block. Never ignore this kind of block. So here we leave it as it is. Okay, we don't touch it. Uh, you also have another strong block. You don't touch it, you leave it as it is, and you can see that beautiful. A beautiful tab. Remember to always have these blocks in here. You can also see there is an RLT here, but it will be violated. And remember, just because it's violated doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Eh? It does. It's an RLT, beautiful RLT that gives some nice move. Remember, when you're doing your blocks, you want blocks that have very impassive moves. We have this. But what happens in future? Instead of it being uh, retested and the market giving us a trade, it was actually taken over by the strong. Now, one thing I want you to be very careful. If a block has a strong block either to the bottom side or to the top side, be very sure that it will be violated because the strong block, just like its name suggests, is usually a very strong block. It's stronger than all other blocks you find. And here we have uh, the candle block. And this is where the market is at right now. You see, every time it's being tapped, the market is pushing down. So until this block is violated to the top side, we keep counting the touches. Touch, down, touch, down. And to the bottom side, we have some liquidity. So maybe one touch down may come and retest this uh, liquidity. We have a liquidity block here. Okay. Or you can call it a, a multiple candle. See these two candlesticks covering that okay so you can have that or you can have what you call the liquidity a week only see that there so this is the liquidity block but we also have a multiple kind of block so until this is broken or retested we just on this range hitting a cell to the top and hitting a buy to the top alternatively ignoring the whole part altogether and waiting until we have an actual move to the top or to the bottom side. So that is on the one hour chart. Now we can also have blocks on trends, on definite trends. If you're a trend line trader, if you're a trend line trader, you can also have blocks on each touch of your trend line and so forth. So the first thing, of course, is to identify where we're coming from. And of course, the yeah, maybe institutional uh, reversal pattern. So here we have a one, two, three institutional reversal with break of market structure. Therefore, the beginning of our trend line. With our trend line, every touch is meant to push the market higher and higher. And with every touch comes a block. So with the first touch that gives us the second touch, there is a, a hidden candle block. So here you can either do the 50%. You can minimize that to 50, have your entry and your stop loss. Now you see the refinement, the refinement of that ensures us that you can use very high and please high is relative. So I don't want you doing standard lots when your account is really small, but high is relative. You can do very heavy lot sizes with a very tight stop loss. 
especially if you're trend line trader, this is really going to work amazing for you. Then there is the next touch now, if, so that we know the exact point. Now, for you to know the exact point where your trend line will be touched, check to the left side and identify where the block is at. Now look at this strong block. What did I say about a strong block? It has to be touched. It has to be retested one way or the other. And remember, we are on H4, meaning this is not just a block. This is some seriously strong block. So on the trend line, our next touch, we expect it to be within that strong block. And remember, we do not refine a strong block, or you can go to the lower time frame if you need to refine it, but it's better if you just treat it as it is. And just like its name suggests, check what happened. There was a week into that block, touch of our trend line, and the market pushed away higher than our previous high. Then we're looking for the next touch to our trend line. We need to find blocks within that impassive move. Don't look for blocks where we have this this range, the trap, the liquidity. Where you see these signs here, this is just liquidity. When you're looking for blocks, of course, you want an impassive move, okay? And here we have this void. Can you see this inefficiency? Just draw your line there. Now, with an efficiency block or the void block, you can refine it to 50%, so you can do your entry. And see how beautiful that was, that was, you see? It was the 50% beautifully touched and it's actually on our trend line. So if your block and your trend line are at the same point, you can imagine here your confidence is at level 110, right? <laughs> You'll be on 110% uh, confidence level and this is where you can comfortably do a lot. Eh? You can do a lot size uh, uh, or whatever you want, but at least your confidence level will be at the top and there. You see, pushing up, do not get scared until the last high or the last liquidity point has been hit and you can take your, your take profit. Again, now you keep pushing. Remember, the market does not always move on a straight line. So you can have an impassive trend line or an aggressive a trend line. With this now, here you just keep drawing your blocks and you have this block here, which is a multiple candle block. So you can either define it for 50%. And you see how beautiful it was tapped and the market pushed up. Now here, this is what I was talking about on the liquidity grab. See this equal highs? There was a grab and then there was a sell. So you could have taken that uh, liquidity grab tail. That is if you had watched the other video. And then here, we, this is where the market is at right now. We either have, you see this inefficiency and the hidden candle here. This has given us a block. See this part. So the market can either push a buy from this point, violating this and going higher, or it can just do a buy start, can violate this, our last block. Okay, it can violate our last block to the bottom side. Do not get into the trade on the first impasse. What do you want? You want the market to come back in a reactive manner retesting this break of this block and then you can exercise your lower sizes to the bottom side. Now that is on a trend line on a higher time. You can also do the same blocks on a lower time. There is no rule that I said that the blocks can only be done on the higher time frame. They can, they can also appear on the lower time. Frame. You can have blocks even on one hour time frame or oh, one minute time frame, sorry, five minutes. So this is a 30 minute time frame block and you do the same thing. Okay, identify your types of blocks. So of course you're coming from the peak, there is break of market structure, the market is pushing down. It gives you a void block. And in that void block, uh, we'll have this touch back. And in that we also have we create or the market created a strong block. Now, I want to mention something special. Something special when a block is created inside another block, especially if the block created is a strong or engulf block. That becomes the most heaviest trade if the market ever comes back, not in the near future, but at some point. Of course, you can see that I've extended that block, but I'll explain it as we move uh, forward. So now keep marking your blocks. If it's violated, it's not uh, good enough. If it's respected, of course, you have your trade. So here we have 
a multiple candle play, uh, block, sorry. So you can have the first candle, of course you get the entry. If you did the 50%, you'd have missed the trade. So if you did the 50, the market did not get to the 50%. So the only way to get these entries either to leave it as optimal or get the first candle. That is for the multiple candle. Now look at what happened when the market came back to that strong block that was created from the void. Look at that. Something else that I want you to add to your knowledge base is if a block has an accumulation before the tap, if there's an accumulation, it's an accumulation before the tap, or what we say, accumulate, manipulate, distribute. The distribution is usually very, very beautiful or basically very, very heavy in terms of trading volume. And how heavy is this? Let's see. Is this being a strong block? You do not need to, to refine it, right? You can just leave it as it is. So your entries at this point here. And how much is that? That is 147 pips. 147 pips. And how much are you risking? You're risking 16. So 16 for 147. <laughs> That's a lot, right? That's a lot. So anytime you have this kind of block, and it gives you accumulation, then some manipulation. Now set in your lot sizes beautifully. Don't forget to set in your stop loss and move through. Now you're done with that. What you'll be looking for, of course, is drawing your other blocks within that move. Every time a move completes and this accumulation path, make sure that you do your blocks within that move because you do not know which ones of them will be revisited. And here we have this block, the void block, was part of that move. We also have the hidden candle. It was touched. Okay, the hidden candle. You can either leave it as it is or take the 50%. If you took the 50%, you'd have missed this trade because it did not get to the 50%. So leaving it as optimal entry, okay, leaving it at this point would have been better because you'd have earned. And then from there, we have this strong block this is where the market is at right now as i'm doing this video this is where the market is at we have this strong block to the bottom side the market is tapping so we expected it to tap then uh, go down but it has decided to do some uh, some zigzags in here now there are two ways to this uh, trade it can either tap continue down breaking this lower low and it continue low it can actually violate it to the top side with a buying candlestick do not struggle to join that uh, violation don't struggle wait for the market to come back to retest it and then from there you can take a risk free trade out so those are the different types of blocks and actually how to refine them there are more details on the part one about the blocks today, I was just concentrating on entries and of course we had to set your stop loss. So pay attention, make notes, go to your to your charts, do a back test, okay? Identify, try identifying these blocks. This is how you gain uh, mastery in any strategy. One, you've watched this video at least 10 times or however uh, many times that your brain require. The next thing is to open a chart open a chart and try identifying the different types of blocks. You can try uh, identifying the strong blocks, then try getting the RLT blocks or the void blocks. These blocks will not favor you all the time. Pick the one that your eye can see first. Don't force it. Don't force anything in Forex. Find what your, your brain can identify faster because there are people who will get there are people who will get the uh, the void block, but they will not see the strong block. There are people who get the RLT, but they will not get the kissing block. So identify what you can see fast on your channel, or sorry, on your chart. And now that is what you work with. Perfect it. Perfect what comes easy to you. If it's not easy to you, ignore it. Okay. If it doesn't come easy to your brain, ignore it. So that is it for the part three. Now we'll be moving for uh, to the last part on the blocks on part three. But for now, I wish you the very best. Until the next video, remember I'm Wajiru Kishangi. Be kind to subscribe to my channel, watch the other videos, and give me feedback on my Forex page on.
Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, write to me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much and you have a beautiful day. Wish you the very best. Don't forget that forex trading is a business like any other. Always approach it professionally for it is indeed doable. Thank you and God bless you.